Hey guys, so what I'm going to be doing today is going over the 4.27 um, in-camera VFX pipeline. It's changed quite a bit from the previous um, 4.26 one. We've got a lot of new um, end display assets and uh, yeah, just a bit of a new pipeline and a new way of going about it. So just going to launch up the engine, uh, 4.27 that is. Um, and straight away I'm going to go into film and television live events and then we want to open the in-camera VFX template. So just name your project something simple like in-camera uh, or camera VF VFX if I can spell uh, and then underscore 427. So we're going to open this project up. Um, there's yeah so like, as i said before there's there's new uh, assets now for end display that it's got its own tab in the content browser and a lot of new cool stuff so it's straight away as you can see there's a new sort of um setup going on where you can actually see the visualization of what's going to be seen on the screen straight away in the editor which is really cool but to start i'm just going to delete this and we're going to start again straight from scratch so you guys know all the steps so first things first, you want to make a uh, right click in the content browser and go into this new end display uh, category, get an end display config. Uh, I'm going to create a new config uh, and then I'm just going to call it test config for now. Um, so I'm going to open this up and this is a new sort of editor window we've got now. So this is uh, called the end display 3d configurer and what we have here is sort of a um, preview screen um, the output mapping the cluster setup and then the components so to start off just delete this um, that uh, screen and what we need to do because i'm not currently set to a um, led wall i'm just going to run uh, as if i was and add the the example the example curved wall which you can get from the epic games epic games uh, documentation and then you just want to open these up come down into their build build settings and you want to just select the full uh, useful position uvs this will just give you a better chance not to have any issues with the UV mapping later on, because that's when we use projection policies and stuff like that, because that's that can make a bit of an issue. If you're not using this, you can get, you know, uh, just wrong projections, basically. So anyway, um, so now we've got them in, we brought them into the engine. Now we want to come into a add components, uh, go add static wall left, that works for me. And then I want to do the same thing again. But I want this one to be right. There we go. And then I'm going to route this to the uh, route instead of attach to the other one. So now we've got our two walls. Uh, this, so we've got two of the left ones at the minute. You just want to come down, change this one to right. And then as you can see, we've got a full LED curved wall or stage. Um, so for me, because I'm not physically connected to a um, LED stage right now, this bit, and I haven't got tracking set up, this bit isn't super, I don't need to do this bit super accurate, but it would be very important if you were, you know, on production making an actual stage um, and you had all your tracking set up because this uh, default viewpoint set here this will be the same as whatever the zero point for your tracking is so with the MOSIS during calibration you would have dropped a zero wherever you drop that zero is where this will be referring to um, you can also drop it again and say likewise with the NCAM or something like that wherever the cube is is where you've set your zero so that point then in relation to the LED wall is what you need to set up in here so going off what I've just pulled together here, 
this would be a about four meters away from the zero point of the tracker. Um, I'm not going to add any height to it really. I'm just going to leave it like this for now. So anyway, you just want to add your meshes to the components, set it up in relation to the real world setup. And then after we've done all of that, we can come down to this cluster, right click it, add new cluster mode. Here is going to give you a, a name for your cluster. Node zero is okay for me. I'm currently only running off one PC, so it's all so I don't have to worry too much about the sync policies and everything. This all looks good. And because I'm only running off one PC, I can just render this locally. Uh, and then you want to select um, you want to select full screen, click add. And as you can see, that's made a viewport uh, a viewport and a host and what the node's rendering. So this viewport for me, because I'm currently working off a HD monitor, um, is actually too big because these are split into two and I wanna have two viewports. So all I'm gonna do is come into region and change this from 1920 to um, 90, 960, I believe, yeah, that's right. Um, so now I have half of the wall and what we want to do here for our settings is go to view origin, default viewpoint, uh, projection policy, change that from simple to mesh because we're currently um, using a mesh to get the right projections. These are set to represent um, the stage, which I don't currently have, but you would make these meshes custom for your stage. So anyway, add mesh. And then because this is on the left, I'm going to choose wall left. That makes sense. Um, yeah, and that's that bit set up. You can check all of your resolutions, uh, your GPUs and all of that stuff in that tab. So now to make another viewport for the right side, I'm gonna add new viewport. We choose one works for me, full HD view origin. We can set that to default, um, mesh. And then we wanna choose right wall and I want the width to be 960. And because the last viewport is rendering from zero, I'm gonna want this one to render from 960. Uh, so when that one finishes, this second one starts. Uh, you'll have to use this as well to, if you're running off a monitor to, to visualize, and then you've got the LED stage attached as like almost a second monitor, uh, what you'll do is you'll set the viewport to start rendering at the end of your uh, monitoring monitor almost, you know. So that's that bit set up and that seems all happy and working correct. Uh, you just double check it, let's use this. Yeah, so that looks all happy to me. Um, so now we, I'm just going to chuck in a in-camera VFX camera. So when we add that, we'll call it that for now. Um, and I'll just pick it up. I won't be adding camera tracking in this video, but if that's something you guys are interested in seeing, then I will definitely add it into another one. So now you can see we've got our end display config down here called test config. And if we drag this out, as you can see, we're set up with a um, stage off of that, which is really cool. So now how do we go about launching this stage? Well, we'll have to use the new um, switchboard, uh, which is a new sort of like uh, tab, or it's kind of like runs a bit separately from the engine. So what I'll do first is just open the listener. What this is listening for now is when I open the switchboard itself, is when I launch, when I tell the switchboard to launch and display, the listener's listening for that uh, launch. And you'll have to have a listener on, um, every server or node. So I'm gonna load the switchboard. And this is going to just install um, certain bits it needs to actually open the switchboard. Um, yeah, so, because uh, this is a completely fresh engine. This is if you are downloaded the engine the first, first time and you're just opening switchboard for the first time, completely new. So this is what you'll be you'll be uh, facing. So I might edit through this bit. Um, we'll see how long it takes.
Okay guys, so I'm back. Um, they, I just finished installing the things needed for the switchboard application to open. Um, and as you can see here, this is our new switchboard. Um, so I did open it up just to check it worked. Um, and all that you have to do is uh, add an end display um, device, and then it will automatically find your config and your level. And you just set, click OK for it all basically. Um, so as you can see now, uh, we've got our uh, end display device within here, which show, will, sh will show all of your nodes. Um, and then what's really cool about it as well is you can so you then click this uh, icon to connect to the listener, which is what we launched before. Um, and basically, now you, what's one of my favorite new things about this end display uh, slash in camera VFX pipeline is now you can monitor all of your uh, you can monitor all of your um, GPU usage, CPU usage, which driver versions you've got, whether you're in sync, whether you're not. You can mon monitor all of that now from this new switchboard, which is really cool. You've even got an output log showing you what's going on everywhere. It's wicked. Um, so I'm just going to launch this now, and hopefully we get a full. Uh, full. Yeah, so there you go. So um, although this is only on my HD monitor now, it's the same principle and process as if I was going to a 4K canvas or, you know, uh, whatever you're going out to, it's the same canvas to get this up and running. So that's that part. Um, just quickly, I'm going to show you guys how to run a multi-user session. Uh, so you can live edit it um, because for me personally, I find this a key part of the entire process is being able to edit it on the fly, see what's going on within the editor and on the LED. So um, what you want to do is you want to come down to this multi-user session and you want to just select auto join, make sure all of these auto build, auto launch, um, server name, call, all that stuff is just selected for you, so wicked. Um, and then on the Unreal side, what we want to do is, uh, so also when you launch your end display from the switchboard, it will automatically launch a multi-user session and a multi-user server. So if I come up now into my product settings uh, and then go multi-user, uh, enable software button. Do a quick restart. Um, yeah, and what multi-user also allows you to do is other people can collaborate on the scene in real time. It's a really cool uh, mechanic, and personally, I find it quite uh, valuable when you're working with display because it helps with the whole visualization, especially now that you can get, you know, previses on your camera. So if you need to move it, you can. Yeah, I mean the whole fostering thing is a hell of a lot more interesting when you've got tracking involved. I mean, the fostering is really good to sort of troubleshoot and help you figure everything out. Uh, close this for a minute. Um, so yeah, uh, back into, uh, let me just, so what you want to do on the editor side is you want to go into multi-user uh, thing, uh, multi-user utilities, uh, multi-user browser, um, and we should, as soon as I launch this, uh, there should become a multi-user multi browser. And as you can see, this relates to, I'll have to save all first. Um, this relates now to, I'm in, so node zero is obviously my local machine on this, but you would have all of your nodes in here. And then OSF user is my editor, and you know it's me within the editor. Um, and as you can see now, if I minimize this, window this a little bit, um, if I select my camera and uh, I move my posture to the side, uh, if I do this, you can kind of, it's hard for me to demonstrate with sh sh uh, a small amount of viewing space here, but. Yeah, it, it's it's naked. So you can you know you can edit the whole scene now with this. Uh, 
spellings, back and forth and whatever. So now you've got the whole multi-user annual displays running. Um, yeah, and so hopefully this was useful for you guys. Um, and uh, let me know what you want to see next. I will definitely get a video up with this, but with tracking, go through the whole track, setting up the tracking side of it. Um, and yeah, I just let me know what you want to see. Let me know if this was useful. Thank you.